one of the trailblazers of our modern outdoor industry. How has it changed since you first came in? You know, first, well, first of all, thank you for saying that. that that's uh, that's quite a compliment. It's, it's crazy because for me, you know, there's so many people, obviously way before me, that, that obviously kind of sure. knocked the path down. And, and it's kind of cool to know that, well, maybe I was able to kind of bush, bush hog a little bit different path. But I, I would say, you know, obviously a lot's changed from the standpoint of uh, – where things are at in social media, I, I, you know, I'd say in, in a good way, everybody has a chance to provide their opinion that can be seen. Also, even content, you know. Yep. However, the bad of that is, just the social part of it, sometimes hunters can beat up on each other pretty good. So, so it, 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 a lot of it has changed, but, you know, in any situation, you got to figure out how to embrace growth and figure out, well, who is the next trail blazer? What is it yep. going to be? But, um, but I'd say the nuts and bolts of what hunting stands for, even if it tries to start changing, usually it's it's collectively the culture brings it back down to earth. And it, you yeah. know, it's about family, friends. Certainly we have better fisheries. Certainly we have better herds and bigger animals. But at the end of the day, um, it, re- it really is just something that's, that's culturally rich and, and heritage. And, uh, and, and we're just so blessed to be able to do it. And, I, and I've always said, too, you know, Chris, I, a lot of people look at hunting as a, as a privilege, and I really never looked at it necessarily as just a privilege. It is, but I always looked at it as a god given right. I mean, you know, it's kind of like self defense, sure. the ability to hunt and yep. gather and feed yourself. Right. Exactly. And so, even though it is entertainment and hunting and it's fun, um, at the end of the day, it really was a god given right to be provided these resources for us to take care of and for them to take care of us. So. Sure. Now, you started out. In turkey blind competitions. Correct. How old were you? Dude, young. I was I was basically in high school, and um, and, and all my heroes were turkey callers. It's crazy. Wow. That was my heroes. Even even if you're naked wood, you know, Chris, um, Paul Butts, Dick Kirby. Sure, sure. Those guys at uh, there in Orchard Park, man. I'm sure they were big Buffalo Bills fans, by the way. No, but, yeah. I'm a giant fan. Yeah, giant fan. <laughs> hey, Giants are doing good this year, man. Yeah. We got we got two New York teams in the playoffs, but um. Anyway, at the end of the day, um, I was always intrigued by, you know, I love music in, in, in a weird way to me, turkey calling and the imitation that was kind of like playing the guitar. So yep. I just love it. And so I just fell in love with turkey hunting first. And then I started to get better at the turkey call. So I was always kind of a student of the, the Paul Butsky, the Dick Kirby, the Eddie Salters. And so I started to feed a turkey calling contest right there when I was in high school. And just out of high school is when I started having some success. You know, called the yeah. Georgia State Championships, uh, the World Championships, the Grand National Championships, even the U.S. Open. And so yeah. it, it was cool looking back. It was just uh, – it was really a cool stepping stone because I got a chance to meet a lot of cool people in the industry. Not only just my heroes, people I looked up to, but that's, that's who introduced me to Bill Jordan and got me my first yeah. kind of gigs or jobs where I got to go guide and you know, do some good things in the hunting industry. So you uh – Moving forward, you you know were interested in getting into the outdoor industry. And what do you tell your family? I'm gonna go get a job in the outdoor industry, but you can't be living calling turkeys, <laughs> right? I, 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 I ran into some pretty stiff resistance. I mean, it's, I always laugh like, man, I, when I first started talking about this stuff, I mean, you would have, you would have thought I went and got on drugs, Chris. I mean, literally, like, oh my god, it's, you know, it's almost like a. You know, be like uh, you, you and I now said, hey, man, we're going to start a rock band moving to L.A. People are like, wait a minute, what if? Yeah, so, you gotta so it was the same way. type of like, well, follow your dreams, but how are you going to make a living? I mean, you know, you yep. know so I think that's what it was. Like, I mean, my aunts, my uncles, uh, and I even, even my grandmother at the time, I went to heat and air school, and I had a, a degree in heat and air technology. And uh, so basically HVAC, you know, um, service and installation, and so, in my blue-collar family, 
this is like, oh my God, I knew Michael's made it. He, he's got a trade. He's, he's, yeah. he's now working in heat and air. Exactly. I had my own van. Like, I had my own van, my service van. I was working for this company called Barrier's Receiving and Cooling in Zeppelin, Georgia. And so everything was going good. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm winning these turkey con contests. And an opportunity comes up. Realtree was needing some help doing some things. And I'm thinking, well, oh, I might try that. And I really thought it was going to be a temporary thing. I, it was almost like, a, in my mind, I was always going to come back to the heat and air or, or this blue collar trade, which I have so much respect for yeah. because that's what I grew up hard working with. You know, people. Most families, that's what they Absolutely. Are. And, and I'd be blessed to do it. Still will be blessed. And and, uh, and so I, I was a little almost uh, not insecure about it, but I, I almost felt like, oh man, I'm kind of walking away from something that's going to be um, that I need. And sure. when I went in to do it, some guy, I thought it'd be. Almost like a trip. Almost like it's like, man, if you ever had to say quit your job because you were going to go for three months and go do some kind of fun, yep. you know, you know, whatever it was. But that's kind of the way I looked at it because I thought sooner or later I was going to come come back to reality. Come back to reality. Said, okay, I'll get back into this. And so I just talked to my dad. You know, at the time I was very young. You know, like literally I wasn't even twenty one. And um, and I remember telling my dad about. It. He said, Well, hey, man, you know, you're only young once, and you ain't got a family. You don't have a a lot of responsibilities outside of providing for yourself. My dad was really good to me, but he was hard on me in a good way with some tough love. Like he's like, you're not yeah. going, you're not going to live here. You know, you might have to find your place. I and mean, it's time for you to get out of the house. Yep. You yeah, know, I'll pay the bills around here, and you know, you got to get out. It's time for you to be your man, whether you're going to do some hunting and guiding or you're going to work with heat and air. So I knew it was inevitable that I was going to get, you know, weaned off the off the care and nurture. Yep. Of, what parents provided, and so, uh, so anyway, that 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 situation when I started talking about this, my family thought I'd been going crazy. Like, yep. you know, can't have fun, you can't hunt the rest of your life. And I knew I had a passion for it. That already about point out of high school, turkey up too much and missing the class. So, <laughs> so yeah, it was weird. And, and, and anyway, one thing led to another. And really, from that time that I went to go take that quick little fun guy and run a camera. Well, it never stopped. Yep. You know, just door to door, just kept opening and doing. How did you originally connect with Realtree? Yeah, so the way I kind of met up with Realtree is where it really hit was is uh, turkey. I was turkey calling, and um, and I had some guys that was on the Realtree Pro staff, guys like Joe Drake, um, a buddy of mine, Ricky Joe Bishop at the time, he had won a Grand National Championship in turkey calling. They were already connected in with Realtree, and they was telling Bill and David Platten about this. Man, there's this young guy. He's called him. He's pretty good. And then I met a guy um, up in Pennsylvania named Dale Ron, who just was amazing, Ron Brothers. And um, they made turkey calls, and so I started using their calls to compete with. And okay. started doing pretty good representing them. And so Dale always had good, kind words to me back to the Realtree camp. So one day, I go to this contest in Perry, Georgia, called the Grand American, and there was First prize was a thousand dollars cash. I'm like, wow. wow. So it ends up Realtree was the title sponsor of this particular contest. Well, lo and behold, all the good callers from around the country came and I got lucky and won won the contest. And so that's where I really met Bill Jordan and 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 Dave and David went there, but Bill was like, Man, we need to I want to do something with you. I want to put you on our, our advisory staff. They call it like a hunting staff, a hunting pro staff. Pro staff. Yeah, and they sent me a box of clothes and one thing led to another and just you know through talking and then David Blanton, I met him and he called me one day and said, Hey man, you know, I need you to come help God. And that's that's where you know I started realizing like, man, that, that's kind of how I met real tree. Is that a church about so, this? So you started doing camera work and then uh, uh rich and road trucks. That's correct. Yeah, well it, it, and the camera work come by accident too because I, I came to to guy, they called me, you know, because I just went to the turkey color contest and I was wearing real tree. So Dave was like, Hey man, could you help? Got some outdoor writers at the time. So there was a lady named Warley Doby, who you might know. She was a writer, and I'd read a lot of her work. And um, so I was already a fan of her work, and they put me with her to take her hunting. So I did. So in the process of hunting with Warley Doby, I remember coming in, and you know, back at camp, was a turkey hunt. You know, we would eat lunch, and I remember telling David, I, um, he kind of on the side, I, I was also helping a buddy of mine who owned an archery pro shop. Okay. So he and I would video a little bit. And so I told David, I said, man, we video a little bit. And I showed him some of our videos of turkey hunts and deer hunts. He's like, dude, did you, did you video that? And I said, some of it I videoed, others my buddy. And he said, 
you run a camera good enough, and once you start running a camera for us, it's going to take people hunting to guide, try to video it. Sure. So I started doing that. The next thing I know, as I was guiding, I was videoing. And then we get ready the next year to go somewhere. And David said, hey, man, I want to hire you as a freelance camera guy to just come up and build. Wow. Like, oh, my God. And so that's really how the camera work started. So I started as a cameraman slash guide slash if you want me to wash your car, I'll switch the warehouse. <laughs> I mean, there was no prima donna. I just couldn't believe I was getting hanged. Yep. These people that I had watched on TV and on videos, you know, yep. so I was getting a chance to be part of that team. That was pretty cool. Now, if uh, you were a contestant on Jeopardy, mm -hmm. what topic would you best get uh, excel in? I would say, uh, for sure, music. I'd say music. Really? Music, yeah, pro probably history. It will, and more and more on just name that tune type of stuff. Man, I love music. I love Classic rock, 80s hair. I mean, literally from 70s, 80s, all the way up, man. I mean, take me as a country music guy. Dude, I love country music, but dude, I love everything. Like, man, I went as yeah. far back to Run DMC, Beastie Boys, obviously wow. Mark Haggard, Leonard Skinner, 38 <laughs> Special. I mean, ZZ Top, we're going to see tonight. I, mean, I just saw him a month ago. It, it's unbelievable. So, yeah, I love, I love music. So, uh, any, any music trivia, I thought I could do pretty good. And, and, and I really, uh, also, the only other subject I really enjoyed in school, outside of say football, if that was a subject or piece, yeah, a subject. Was, was history. I loved history, you know. Wow. So, you know, obviously I live in the South, so a lot of the Civil War, uh, the, the, the the Indian, the Indian stuff, and, and the founding of America. A lot of I love that, and, and obviously I just think history is really cool because it, uh, it kind of tells us what can happen, yeah, because it has happened. And I've often, really wondered, I've often wondered why sometimes our politicians don't pay more attention to history, but it also helps understand why some of the politicians want to erase history yep. because there's a track record of certain things failing. You know? yep. So anyway, yeah, I like history and music. <clears throat> right, so if you could hunt in any period in history, which one would it be? I would say, honestly, probably right now. And, and the reason I say that, um, and that might be surprising, but this also goes to history and what us as hunters has done. Our game and fish, our fisheries and our herds and our flocks have never been as good. So yep. was there good periods in certain species? Yes. However, but if you look at the amount of money, you know, the Pittman Act, all this stuff that's happened in the hunters' dollars from nonprofit to the way we manage our herds, the way the private landowners really take above and beyond this, this responsibility to take care of these animals that live on their property. Even though maybe the state and government look at them as theirs, mm -hmm. I think these landowners look at this this wildlife as something that's, even though they hunt them and put them on the table from time to time, um, I mean, they certainly manage and take care of They trap, they, they do their best to make sure there's a good balance. And so, the result of that, I don't think we've ever had as good of hunting nationwide as we do right now. From from the abundance and to the quality. I mean, we're breaking records every year. Sure. You know, even if you're not a trophy hunter, and that's fine. And even somebody that's against trophy hunting, well, that's fine too. That's fine too. But at the same time, you can't deny that the trophy hunting and all of it coming together isn't helpful good for the herd because if that were the case we wouldn't have we wouldn't be shooting bigger animals yeah heavier weights more of things uh, bigger scores so that means that the accuracy is getting bigger so uh, mm -hmm. so yeah i mean just to hunt i think right now anybody wants to get in hunting is some of the best best hunting that's out there i agree now how do you think your life would be different if you never picked up a turkey ball? you know I, I would like to think that that i would have figured out a way to to get through and, and try to maintain some happiness and joy, but drastically different. I, I, I feel like it would just been a lot of joy <laughs> took away. Because, <laughs> matter of fact, I was talking to a good friend of mine the other day, and we were sitting around talking uh, around a campfire, and uh, the question come up. It's like, even though we have a tremendous amount of ladies or something, it's a grown man. I'm like, he asked me, he said, well, if you don't hunt, what do you do? <laughs> yeah. And it's funny, and I'm sure many people can quickly say, "Oh, golf, or we can go, we can go see, uh, you know, ZZ Top in concert. We can yeah. go." Well, I do all that too, but there would be such a void. Yep. 
if I hadn't picked up that turkey call, it would have, it, it, the grassroots of what I know about life and, and really, I don't know, the good Lord's resources. The opportunities wouldn't be. The opportunities, who we met. I mean, you and I both just had lunch with Joe Montana. Yep. You know, I mean, think about it. That's really cool. You know, it is cool. Inevitably, a redneck in New York, a redneck in Georgia. We're just talking and meeting each other and hanging out and eating fine steaks and just yep. living life. And you got all of us here in Las Vegas. And, uh, and so, anyway, drastically, uh, there would have been a lot of things that I wouldn't have experienced. You know, could have something else come in that, that I could have chased after and tried to put everything I had in it that could have equally filled avoid in another way that could be positive possibly but uh yeah i wouldn't trade it i don't even like to think about not not yeah. give up that first turkey call and having that passion for it all right well what is your favorite unimportant thing that you do probably favorite unimportant thing i do um again it can kind of probably one of the things i like to do a lot that, and i really enjoy with my kids especially my two boys Meyer and Mason, um, but all my kids love music, but I love to play guitar, so I love I love smoke a good cigar and sit around and jam with my boys, one's 18, one's 22, and uh, That's oh cool. man, so that it's, it's, uh, it, it's been really cool, because you know, you get a little older, and they like I'm getting out there playing tackle man on football, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I also, I, I love, I, I'm really busy, um, I, I like to be active. You know, the old saying says, if you got your health, you got everything, and I believe in that. And so long as I got my health, man, I like to be busy. I like to work. And, man, we got little pit bikes. We race motorcycles. Just right. have a blast, man. My wife talked to me a man child, man. I'm, I'm you know, we're all having a good time. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So, getting back to career. Yeah. How did you come up with the bone color? That is crazy, man. That, that's a cool story. And don't get asked a lot. Um, basically, what happened was, is when, in 2007, um, I started working with Gander Mountain, and mm-hmm. uh, they hired me to host their TV show. So by me doing that, I had to leave full-time employment at Realtree. So at the same, the same time, Bill Jordan basically made me a subcontractor and continued hosting the show, Realtree Road, Road Trips, mm-hmm. as you mentioned earlier. And so this is where I really first saw some opportunity to, say, make money. You know, like, like wow, that, you know, I, I'm, I'm getting to host two shows. And... And immediately, in the short term, it, I felt like, man, I got some money in my pocket. But I'd always heard of this. I've always heard, you know, man, you should do this. Or put it, you know, whether it's the stock market, buy real estate. And granted, I wasn't rich, but that was more money I've ever experienced in, in, my, in one year span, for sure. Sure. And I remember quickly thinking, well, where should I make an investment? I don't need all this money. I've been living on literally forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year. And, and I was doing fine. I was happy. And, um, and so... My thought process was, well, why don't I invest something else into the future and not bet invest in myself? And so I come up with the concept of me, Nick, Munt, and Team on Turn, um, basically you know, doing a show very similar to road trips. And so I didn't have a name for it. And so where the name for that come up was simultaneously what even spawned the reason I wanted to invest in something was a lot of companies that I hadn't had a chance to work endorsements with, they was giving me opportunity with these signature series license type opportunities which if you look at Realtree that's been their model you know it's a licensing company they license out their name they license out their camera package and so I understood that model and I knew it could be lucrative it could lead to some you know long-term mailbox money and, yep. and success but most everybody was wanting to call it a Michael Waddell series you know and so the first big opportunity I had was Thompson Center and uh, at the time Greg Rich was uh, owned the company in front of the marketing and they said man I want to do Michael Waddell with this muzzle over there. And so I was excited. I was flattered. Yeah. But for some reason, I didn't like the idea of a Michael Waddell bone collector, I, a, a bone, I mean, a Michael Waddell signature edition. I was like, man, that's a little shallow. I don't know my name. I don't know. And so we go up to the range and say, well, we'll, we'll figure it out. I just want to do something. And uh, so we're shooting these guns. We had all these different models and configurations. We're shooting, shooting. And so what turned out to be a bone collector gun, I shot this gun. And I, and I looked at Greg and said, man, I don't know what we're going to call it, but this is nature going to be a bone collector. You know? And when I said it, I, that's the that's it. It's the bone collector. This is the bone collector gun. And uh, so from there, I flew home. And um, on the way home, I got to thinking, I was like, this is also the title of the show. Yeah. And so, uh, anyway, the rest was kind of history. And I remember I 
had a graphic artist over in Alabama, and I said, hey, man, I'm just thinking of this idea, and I kind of told him the concept, and went there and wrote on a napkin on a plane on the ride home, and, uh, and he came up with the logo. Like, we never really made any alterations to the logo. That The bone click logo is the original, wow. original logo that he came up with. Now, I don't know if you remember this. Uh, this is a while back. When the Golden Moose was, I was doing the red carpet, and I called you up and I gave you a pick. Yeah. And you're like, what is it? I said, it's Long Island Duckling Boats. What the hell is Long Island Duckling Boats? It's the boat collector. I'm sure you don't have them. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember that. I do remember that. That's awesome. Thank you. Now, um, lastly, how would you like to be remembered in the outdoor industry? You know what? That's a good question. Um, it's hard to say. I, I think in the end of the day, um, somebody that maybe spoke up when needed to speak up uh, and, and fight for really the culture of all of us who like to hunt. Um, and I know that might sound kind of weird to say fight for the hunters, but they say, well, nobody's fighting. And I think a lot of that fight is trying to talk to the choir, essentially, and trying to keep us together as a group of hunters because everybody likes different things. You know, yeah. the things I love the most, like people are very surprised when I say, what's your favorite thing to hunt? I say, it's turkeys. I'm like, man, you've hunted elk and sheep and all this stuff, and turkeys still your favorite? I'm like, it is. That might be surprising, but, you know, That's what I like is different than you. You know, people say, well, what's your favorite thing to hunt with? It's like, okay, well, it's a bow and arrow, but still every once in a while I get three or eight and go hunt a deer. Sure. And so, Inevitably, there's so many t- tips and tactics and things, and so I, I think if if I could be anything, I, I hope I could be somewhat of, of a voice for all hunters to say, man, hey, it, it is ours. The good Lord gave it to us. We all do it different ways, and, and we all have opinions which certainly deserve to be heard, and, and, and our opinions should be deserved to be somewhat sold, that you can change you know, maybe a, a road or a path. But at the end of the day, we are one and the same other than some of us like a white house. Some of us have a lot of cabins. Some of us, you know, might want to paint a house blue with, sure. with red shutters. Who knows? You can do what you want to, and that's the decision. And hunting's the same way. It's here. And I, and I think at the end of the day, I'd like to just be known as somebody who didn't take himself too seriously, that just loved hunting and loved people and want to see people to succeed. That That's... That's really, that's really it. That's really it. I, I you know, um, hopefully somebody who helped improve a space that I was always a big fan of. That's yeah. really it. Well, so thank you, certainly. Have. Thank you, man. That means heck of a lot, buddy. I appreciate your time. Thank you, man. Appreciate it so much. Thanks. Good to see you again, man.